Okay, so I'm going to do a juice recipe right now. I'm going to do a green juice recipe because uh, I've been having too much fruit lately. I think Sylvia made me um, all four juices were fruity, sugary juices yesterday and my tongue is really feeling um, sandpapery. So uh, I want to show you guys that I don't just have do fruit, you know, I do have a lot of green uh, juices. And I got a lot of green in here. I got some. This is last week's kale. It's kind of going bad. You see, I have everything in the glass jars with water. I try to keep stuff crisp and alive. And you, yeah, this stuff is crisp. Even the celery down here is in water. Uh, let's see. I got this for uh, Portia at the. At, um, Clark's Nutrition Center. It's all it's vegan, uh, vegan, non-GM, gluten-free, chocolate chip, um, cookie dough. So that's for my daughter. But uh, yeah, we still got the grapes and the celery. You see the celery is in a plastic container in there, in the water, and it is not still pretty crisp. Still really crisp. Okay, so I'm going to do a green juice right now. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm just going to do a lemon ginger blast with, um, I'm going to add some kale and some dandelion greens back there to my lemon ginger blast because uh, I really want to get some of the, um, the bitter in with the green juice. So let me put this on the tripod. See, is that a good is that a good angle? Alright. So let's get this thing started. Where's the plunger at? Have you seen the plunger? Yeah, right there. Lift this up. That's not a good angle. Alright. So let's see if I can do this. Oh, okay. Um I'm gonna take everything out. This is uh this is last week's parsley, this is last week's? Mm -hmm. Last week's kale. This is already a week old, this stuff. This is this week's parsley, nice and fresh. This is uh, this is this week's cilantro, I can tell it's really fresh. Um, this is looks like last week's curly kale. Mm -hmm. It's not looking so good. I'm gonna use all that. <coughs> Dandelion greens. This is this week's kale, nice and fresh. This looks like it's stuck back here. It's stuck in the fridge. Boom. I'm going to use a cucumber. Prasha! Prasha! Let's see if we can get a uh, YouTube, Facebook live feed going while I do this. Prashita! Yeah? You want to grab my phone and let's do a Facebook live video? Let's, I always start with the mint, I mean the, the greens. Oh, you need to open it up for Mm. 
We're good. We're out. I think you, need, you might need to turn it around. You might need to turn it around like that. Okay. There you go. All right, so I'm going to do a Sunday morning. This is going to be my breakfast, 10 o'clock, a little bit late in the morning. Um, I did get this morning started off with a coffee enema. This is just dandelion greens right here, so I put like two, uh, three, four. I got to keep track of this because I am um, document. I am, you know, putting all my ingredients for you guys. I just lost track. Is that six? Four, five. I think that was five? Five or six. Seven. Coffee. Eight. Well, does it mean if it says that um, like someone is watching and says bring them on camera? I don't know. Nine. Ten. I saw that uh, last time and I pushed the button and I don't know what it did. I don't know. Maybe it, it, uh, I'm inviting them to be on camera too but it didn't do anything. 11, 12, 13, 14, Robin, Robin, shit, what's that, hi Ralph? 16, hello Robin, that was uh, 16 leaves of hi, dandelion hi. greens, hello, and uh, this is not, like I said, this is not the freshest, this is last week's black kale, maybe we should be writing this down, so later on I'm not wondering. I was trying to grab a pen. Over there, big. Piece of paper. Yeah. Kale, dinosaur kale, Tuscan kale, uh, Lassinato kale, whatever you want to call it. One, two, three, four, five, six. See what's going on here, how it's speeding it out, how we're getting the juice. So I gotta write that down. 12 black leaves of kale. Alright, and then um, since this is a lemon ginger blast, we gotta have a, a whole bunch of parsley. Probably not gonna use a whole bunch, we're gonna use maybe this much. And you notice I am doing all the herbs first because then later uh, all this other hard fiber stuff is going to push it through. Yeah, I'm just going to do all this parsley. Mm -hmm. Mani Vila Turnage said hello. Hello. Hello, yeah, hello. Uh, I'm doing this on my phone so I can't, uh, and my daughter's holding the phone so I really can't see the comments that are going on, just uh, just relying on my daughter to uh, read it to me to what's going on. Oh, um. A bunch of porcelain. Zubi Lick Hari said, um, can you share the written recipe? Yeah, uh, I do have, this is my third video on doing the lemon ginger blast. I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the the post when I'm finished here. So don't you worry your pretty little head about that. 
Okay, do we have any of last week's cilantro? No, huh? I think that was it. Yeah. Huh? I, I think That's it. So I'm going to be up. using this week's cilantro. If you guys notice, I have everything in, in uh, glass jars with water in the fridge. This is to help help it uh, help help the stuff stay crisper and uh, fresher a little bit longer. Help the leaves stay alive. Because one thing I did notice is if I don't do this, things get real wilty real quick. So this is supposed to be a bunch of parsley. Show the wheatgrass. <laughs> it's a green star. They're asking if we juice too. The family juices? Sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. They the kids do take a juice. Uh, Sylvia makes them a juice, and they take one to school. Um, Sylvia does have. You have to try to have a daily juice, huh? Yeah. Uh, nobody in the family is a juice faster like I am, uh, but the family does share in on having juices. Um, that's like, why you see a lot of fruits and vegetables when we buy. That's why you <laughs> see that's... If you watch what uh, what I buy on a weekly basis, I'm doing a video where I buy on a weekly basis. I'm uploading it right now to you, my YouTube channel. Uh, that's Pappy Veg. Um, I went to the farmer's market on Thursday and then Sylvia went to Costco on Friday. And I'm uploading a video on what we bought and how much we spent. And I did one last week as well. Um, well, um, yeah. This is the green star juicer. Yeah, this is a this is a let me move this so you can read it. The company is Tribest. Uh, the model is a green star and it's the Elite. Elite. And this was a six hundred dollar juicer, so not cheap. So let's do a bunch of cilantro. Let's do um, some curly kale from last week. And because I have it in the water, look at that, it's still, it's still crisp. This is from last week, it's still nice and crisp. Do you buy organic or regular? Uh, this is from the farmer's market, so it's not USDA certified organic. Uh, but, you know, you as you'll see in, I don't think I got it on video. I didn't get it on video of me asking the farmers. Uh, but you, you, of course, we asked the farmers, do you... Is it organic? And they have to tell you no because you have to pay. They have to pay a bunch of fees in order to be certified organic. But you ask them instead. Do you guys use any sprays? Do you guys use any pesticides? And of course, they tell you no. Uh, my second question to them was, um, how do you guys treat your soil? And uh, right away they were like, well, we uh, compost, compost the soil. A lot of times they're not. They're not the actual farmers that are there. They're just workers that they work for the farmers and. Um, so they, they know how to answer the questions though. Um, Papi. Yeah. Um, so bias. That's, that's why they call me Papi Veg because you hear my daughter, she says Papi, Papi, Papi. That's what my kids call me. Papi. That's the reason behind the name Papi Veg. And I didn't count how many leaves of curly kale that was. How many was Three it? Three or four. If it wasn't would, many. We'll rewind the video and we'll... Put a question next to it. Um, have you heard of a kit that that um, checks veggies if they're organic or not? No, I haven't. Is there? Yeah. Well, um, they heard of one. Oh, okay. To look at it. Have you lost any weight? Have <laughs> I lost weight? Yes. <laughs> That's funny because anybody who knows me knows, yes, I, I lost weight. Uh, this morning I was 146.8. And August of 2015, when I first started juicing, I was 255 pounds. So that's a little bit more than 100 pounds that I've lost uh, in about two years. I'm not laughing because I, I think that's a dumb question. I'm laughing because um, people that know me, yes, people that have been around me long enough know. Uh, most of my adult life, I've been uh, overweight. Ever since I got married, uh, I just sort of let myself go. Um, and I got married when I was uh, 21, and I'm now 39, I'll be 40 this year, and uh, so that was one cucumber. The interesting thing is I was talking to, I was talking to a guy at work yesterday, 
and he asked me, do I have kids? And I told him, uh, yes, I have kids. Here, I, have, I have two kids. I have a 13-year-old a daughter. And she's just 13, 13 on Sunday. And I have a 12-year-old. Uh, my son will be 12 next month. And he goes, wow, you don't look... You don't look old enough. I told him, uh, well, I'm 39, I'll be 40, and, you know, uh, for about five months, I'll be 40. And he goes, wow, you don't look, uh, you look like you're in your 20s. And he goes, uh, what do you eat? And I started laughing, I go, well, I eat juice. And he was sort of like, he did, I don't know if he heard what I said, but, you know, I, I juice a lot. Uh, of course, a lot of that is genetics. You know, my, my dad had the same problem people would confuse him for a young man when he, when he was in his 60s. Um, he gets kind of irritated how people think he's a young whippersnapper when he's, uh, you know, he's, he's in his 40s, 50s, or 60s. He's not so young. And he even told me at one point, he says, I'm thinking of frosting my hair gray so people you know, see that I, I'm a lot older and I'm a lot wiser than what they think. So that's getting kind of cool. We are, we're doing the um, lemon ginger blast. Yeah, lemon ginger blast with a twist. I added dandelion greens for the bitterness. Dandelion greens are bitter and uh, they help stimulate um, bile uh, secretion into the, the um, into the liver to help clean out toxins. So, Move that thing; they can't see the juicer. Oh, sorry. And he does not eat red meat at all. We're vegan. Somebody asked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I stopped eating meat a April of 2016, and I haven't had any animal products. No eggs, no dairy, no fish, no chicken, uh, no cheese, no nothing like that uh, since April of 2016. So that was. Uh, did I write down? Yes, I did. What else do we want to put in this? Mint! Don't forget the mint with the lemon ginger blast. Um, you get to the weight loss video by going to his YouTube channel at Poppy Veg. Yes, it's also the pinned post in the group. So if you go to the main uh, page in the group and you click on the pinned post, uh, that's, that's me, that's my um, video. And you'll be able to see pictures of how heavy I was. Why did you choose this juicer? This juicer because, uh, well, if you guys are familiar with Dan McDonald, Dan the Man, the Life Regenerator on YouTube, um, or and his mentor, Lou Corona, they both use this juicer. And the reason why they use this juicer is because it's, uh, it's got a, a patented technology of the twin uh, magnetized metal gears that are in here. Uh, they're magnetized because if you know anything about uh, magnet therapy, what it does is it, it, it uh, restructures the water, uh, makes it more absorbable into the, the system. And uh, it's a slow juicer, so it's going to uh, decrease the amount of uh, oxidation and friction it's not going to heat up the juice and cause it to lose um, nutrient value or enzymes. They say it's supposed to last longer, but even I know, even in the Green Star, I'm not going to drink a juice that's like three days. They say you can drink it that's three days old. I don't. I I usually drink my juices that very same day, if not the next day. Then. Um, what do you eat? What do I eat? What do I eat? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm vegan, so right now, before I started this juice fast, today's day um, 14 of this juice fast, I was eating all raw uh, fruits, mostly fruits, and um, light salads. Ralphie. Uh, so. Breakfast was usually six bananas, six or eight bananas, and then later on was a banana smoothie, which consisted of two bananas, two dates, and two handfuls of spinach. And I would have that every morning while I go to work. And then, uh, 
maybe a little bit later on, some apple or a couple of apples, uh, maybe some carrots. Um, what else? What else would you pack me for lunch? Bunch of fruits. Oh, some persimmons because they're. Fruit. I try to eat what's in season because we do get a lot of our food from the local farmers markets, and they mm -hmm. normally have what's in season. Um, right now, grapefruit is heavily in season, so I have been munching down on a lot of grapefruit. See, these are like cantaloupe-sized grapefruits. This is from Mentone, California. And what herbs are in here? Um, Peppermint. We got parsley, cilantro, dandelion greens, uh, mint, and I'm going to throw some ginger in here. We don't have any turmeric, huh? Ooh, I don't even think we have ginger, babe. We don't even have ginger? Yeah. What? So it's going to be a lemon ginger blast minus the ginger. Yeah. Mm. I always forget something when I do this lemon ginger blast video. How long can you store the juice? They say three days with this juicer. But, like I mentioned, I myself don't... Don't let it sit that long. I normally try to have it that same day, if not the next day. Okay. Somebody asked if you grow your own wheatgrass. Ha! <laughs> let me get the apple. Let me get my apple. Can you feel this? Hmm. You could freeze the juice. I wouldn't. I don't, and I wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Um, for, to me, you can do it what you want to do. Don't ever let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong, even though you might be doing it wrong. Uh, the reason why I wouldn't freeze the juice is because Dan McDonald, he said it best. He mentioned that in one of his videos. He, of course, is a raw foodist. He eats everything raw. He doesn't cook anything because when you cook things, you heat it up and you kill the live enzymes, the life force out of that food. Um, and he says when you freeze it, you do the same. He says when you cook, freeze, uh, what else do you say? Can, jar your food, you're gonna get you're gonna get cooked, frozen um, life out of that food. So he doesn't freeze anything. Of course, uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, Lauren Lockman, he um, he mentions how fruit, like if I were to cut this and put it in a plastic bag and put it into the freezer, well, th this apple is a lot of water. There's a lot of water in this apple. And when you freeze something, you change the molecular structure of it. Um, in plate, you replace you replace those uh, water particles for uh, ice crystals. And when you take it out of the freezer and you de-thaw it, you now uh, melt those water crystals and now uh, what do you have? You have evaporated mush. The fruit is a lot mushier. So you've changed the composition of the fruit. It's not the same as fresh. So I guess to answer that question, you could do it if you want. I've seen a lot of people do it. I've never done it. And um, I don't think I ever will. What was the other question? Do you grow your own wheatgrass? Oh, do I grow my own wheatgrass? I have. I've grown my own wheatgrass before, but it never came out looking this thick. This is thick and lush. I got this from uh, Clark's Nutrition Center last night. And uh, I saw it. It was $10.99. And I was just like, I got I to gotta get that. I'm tempted to do two lemons. I've grown my own and I did a YouTube video on how I, um, we bought the organic uh, red wheat berries from BJ's Nutrition uh, Health Food Store. Uh, we sp Sylvia did the video. She sprouted them. She soaked them, sprouted them, and planted them in organic soil. and. Uh, 
watered them, of course, watered them every day. And it took a long time. How long would you say it took? Like two weeks? Maybe more? Yeah. It took a long time to grow them. So I'm going to do two lemons. I don't know why. And like I said, it just wasn't as as thick as this this one is. So when I saw this one, I haven't done wheatgrass in a long time. And there's some controversy be behind that, why I don't do it. And I don't think I'm gonna go into that right now. Is that everything? Oh, celery. We do leave the rind on the lemons. Right? I do. Not everybody does. Like I say, everybody's different. I do because it's a tip that I learned from uh, Dan McDonald, the Life Regenerator on YouTube. Um, it's so fresh. Leaving the, leaving the rinds on. There are lots of nutrients and minerals in the rinds of everything that you juice. Um, and it normally is said that there's the exact same nutrients in the rind, only in concentrated doses. And of course, one thing that Dan, that was one, two, one thing that Dan the man um, says is that uh, there are essential oils in the rind of the lemon. So you want to get those in your body, so go ahead and use the rind. Now oranges, I don't use the rind. It makes the juice taste bitter. Grapefruits, I don't use the rind. Um, Lemons are good. You can answer that one. Me and my brother are vegan too. And for lunch, we um, we'll take sandwiches. This week, we've done um, rice with vegetables and soy sauce and soy sauce. Oh, that's yeah. That's what my my daughter takes to um, school. How many was that? Five or six? I'm not even writing this down. Anymore. No, he lost count. Have we ever gave the wheatgrass magnesium to nourish it? To make what? Um, have we ever gave wheatgrass magnesium to nourish it? No, just water. Water, uh, oh, and uh, put some baking soda in that water to help kill the um, mold. 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 It, it does tend to grow mold. Does this one have a little bit of mold it down does. at the roots? Yeah. Um, it'll grow mold. So. I learned a trick on YouTube, put uh, some baking soda in it to help kill the mold. Oh, I'm forgetting the most important part. Habanero? The most important part of the lemon ginger blast, the habanero. Habanero. You know what? It's supposed to be two apples, so I could run it through with another apple, huh? Two apples, yeah. Oh, um, what does, um, what causes foam to be on the juices? Oxidation. Foam is oxidation. As you can see, even the green star is not perfect. See all that foam in there? That's got foam. I believe there's a group member of the group. Her name is Cindy Laughlin, and she has an angel juicer, which is very similar to the green star, only better. That one runs for a thousand dollars, and I'm not sure on that, but I believe that one probably produces a lot less foam. There's another member of the group named Paul Borst that he's got, <coughs> oh. similar to uh, the uh, Norwalk juicer, he's got a juicer called Pure Juicer, and that's like a $2,400, $2, $2,600 juicer, where it's got, it just essentially like grinds it up like a champion juicer, and then it's got a hydraulic press where it squeezes uh, you take the mulch that it grinds up and it squeezes all the water out of it. And that one I've seen produces zero foam. How much time per day do you spend juicing? Well, my wife, uh, thank you, she juices, uh, mm. she does my juices for me. She gets up in the morning, she makes my juices. And I, I, because she uses the Green Star, it takes her about an hour and 20 minutes to do four juices for me. And then maybe like another 40, 40 minutes to uh, uh, clean everything up. So 
about two hours every morning. Have you ever had a stomach ache from any of the combinations? You know, I've had gas. Not a stomach. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have had a stomach <coughs> ache from uh, one time I made the salsa juice, which has got a couple jalapenos in it, and I drank it, and like I think it's the caspasin in the jalapenos. It did burn my stomach. I was like, oh my stomach, but it went away pretty quick. <coughs> um, I have had like. A lot of, when I was juicing a lot of heavily green juices and beet juices, I did notice um, some gas that I had and discomfort and feeling like maybe bloated. Thirty-two per juice. Yeah, four thirty-two. Four thirty-two per juice per ounces. How much do I have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This jar right here is thirty-two ounces or one quart or one liter. Um, I usually fill it all the way up. I try to fill it all the way up to 32 ounces. And I have four, I try to have four of those a day. Now that's gonna be one gallon. See, here's all the foam. The rare fruit is an apple. Washington apple. That was two uh, red delicious Red apples. delicious. Okay. Well, what do you do with the pulp? Compost for now. Yeah. We were using the dehydrator for a while, making crackers. I've got a, I've got a uh, composter outside. Maybe I'll take you guys outside right now and I'll show it to you. Um, but I've put, been putting all my pulp in there for a year. Haven't been able to put all of it because it got pretty full. Mixing it in with my uh, lawn clippings every time I, I cut my grass and trying to get as many uh, dead brown leaves that uh, fall off of the trees. Mix all that together, and uh, it took about almost a year, but it's finally it's ready. It's nice compost. It looks like some good soil, and I'm gonna. I'll show you guys right now. This is done. I don't know if you guys want to get close and see how much I. Look at this. All this is fiber. People say you don't get fiber doing juices. Are you kidding me? That's a lot of fiber. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll get closer. See all that? The reason why, that's the reason why I'm straining these juices, because I'm trying to get z zero fiber, as little fiber as possible. What is your favorite detoxing juice? Detoxing juice? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have one. I, uh, I just drink juices. I like this lemon ginger blast. This is a really good juice. And they say it's a detoxifier, they say it's a cleanser. I myself, I try not to look at certain juices as detoxing. I try to look at the whole juicing as a whole as detoxing and cleansing out the body. Every juice, every juice that you make or, or drink has got a cleansing effect. Actually, that's not even true. The body is a natural cleanser and detoxifier all by itself. As long as you get out of the way, that's 32 ounces. You know what? I need to take a picture. Uh, hold it like that, and then I'll do a, a screenshot. I'll do a screenshot for the group. No, I'll hold it. I'll hold it. That's fine. How do you adjust? Go back. How do you adjust to the taste of green juices? You know, one of my first juices was a green juice. It was Joe Cross's Mean Green from the movie Fat Sick and Nerdy Dead. And that was like one of my first juices. You know what? I'll get your phone and I'll take a picture of it. Where's your phone at? Right here? Coffee table. Me, I just jumped right in and had a green juice. I mean, there's a protocol to go by. That's for you guys in the group. Later on, I'm going to post what I'm having. There's a protocol uh, on juicerecipes.com. They have a 30-day challenge where they get you gradually adjusted to uh, liking green juices. And they start out with uh, like carrot, apple, and celery. And then you carrot, orange, and apple 
um, and then they do like very they like carrot, lemon, ginger. They work you up, and then by like the 14th day, they start out with something called a, a beginner green juice, and it has just spinach in it. it doesn't have kale in it yet, and uh, you kind of get the taste of that, the flavor for that, and then they gradually work you into the kale um, and the spinach, and uh, I think that's it. And then uh, they have a juice called the nice green. I did a whole 30-day um, course of it on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, Poppy Veg, uh, you'll see the uh, juicing for you'll see the 30-day juice challenge on there, and um, I think the uh, the juicing for health juice challenge on there. Uh, I went through all of those recipes one a day, and uh, that that'll help you get used to liking green juices. But this one is very spicy. Well, they call me wife of the year. Laugh out loud. She's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you for that. That is good. Why no fiber, spicy. babe? Spicy. Oh, no fiber because back to what I was saying about if you get out of the way and do a fast, um, the body knows how to cleanse and detox itself uh, uh, with no food. As long as you're not putting food into the, the digestive system, the stomach, the digestive tract will start work on repairing and healing itself. And I learned this through watching um, Lauren Lock YouTube videos about, by Lauren Lockman, who's a huge water faster. He doesn't even believe in juice fasting. He just believes in water fasting. Also through John Rose, who's a huge juice faster. Um, and they both say the same thing. Anybody who knows anything about fasting, dry fat, be it dry fasting, water fasting, or juice fasting, um, say, that same, say the same thing. If you stop putting food into your your digestive tract where it has to constantly uh, work on digesting that so that means even smoothies with all the fiber then the body will then conserve that energy and start rechanneling it towards healing itself and working on all the junk that's in our uh, our 30 foot long uh, food tube uh, so the body knows how to heal itself if we, we just get out of the way and Joe Cross says that on his movie fat sick and nearly dead if you just get out of the way the body knows how to do itself how to heal itself we do strain them so that's why I'm trying to strain out all the fiber as possible because I don't want fiber getting involved in, in, in stopping that healing process I want the maximum amount of healing process as possible and this is a really good juice this is the lemon ginger blast but we missed the ginger sorry it's still good let me show yeah, you the compost let me delicious. show you the composter Come with me, outside. You can unplug it, huh? Hmm? Unplug it. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh my this gosh. This is uh, the compost pile right here that I haven't had a chance to put into the composter yet. But this is, you see there's a lot of carrots. Uh, there's a lot of banana peels. Uh, there's some coconut shells. So this is the compost that I bought from HomeDepot.com, and basically, the dogs I'm gonna are, do, are going to drink it. Are they? Hmm. I'm just kidding. I'm going to do a YouTube video on it. It spins around. Oh, it's really heavy. Careful what you choose. Hey, Jack, get away. Oh, it's really heavy. It spins around so you could mix up your... compost and then you open it up. Ew. Bless me. And that's the compost, what it looks like after about almost a year. No, maybe like a good eight months. And it's all um, like thick, rich soil. Smells like soil. Yeah, it's still got some heavy coconuts in there and some peanut shells and stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it, spread it into the that's a pomegranate tree over there. This is a nectarine tree right here. Mm. And uh, those I believe are cherry plum trees right there. So I'm gonna use that to feed, to try to grow my own organic garden. So uh, that was it for today. I'm gonna 
finish this green juice, it's my breakfast, and then uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and uh, cheers to your guys' health. Bye. Bye.